Hey guys, uh, just want to do a little short video about grace and giving. Um, so it's still a little raw because um, I'm still evaluating, processing, uh, checking, listening, so many things involved in it. But anyhow, uh, this was early this morning and the grace piece God's revelation of accepting Jesus Christ for his eternal life and glory into his eternal life and glory so God started the giving thing given us a son and grace so that's kind of why I'm evaluating because it's like what are people giving I'm gonna say this okay just because it had nothing to do with us but it has to do with the giving piece but because it's what I'm about to get into some of y'all might become offended but I'm not going to offend anybody but I'm never going to stop not giving but this tithe and offering seemingly has gotten out of hand I'm not saying I won't ever stop giving that honestly because I really don't think you've done anything giving wise if you haven't given past your tithes you know my wife and I are you know, I'm not real good at numbers I'm horrible at that actually um, but by the grace of God, I'm not. But 20, 25%, you know, and we're not millionaires, guys, not even, not billionaires, not giving out of an abundance. A lot of it's giving out of our living, honestly. I'm not saying that to egotistical gloating or any of that other kind of garbage because that's part of, part of where the giving has got twisted up. But, I'm a firm believer that yes, you should, whoever your leader is, pastor, whatever you call them, um, or the church where you're going to, you should support them so that they can get their mind off of the things of the natural and into the things of the spiritual. That's very important. That's part, you know, that's kind of how I believe the time should be revolved around. But the rest of it, for the extravagance and the, just the, the stuff, if the body that they're leading, that God gave them, if he did give it to them, is not get, giving to, then it just becomes another program, another show cheap entertainment um, just becomes something it never was intended to be and you can carry it to the other extreme and just you know give everything you have to the poor and the needy and you know what you could be a billionaire today and go out and try to solve the homeless problem in America or pick a city even probably and you couldn't even probably solve it You'd be broke before the end of the day and probably not even really put a dent into it. My wife and I are starting a helps ministry. No, I probably shouldn't even call it that. I don't even know if I want to call it the ministry, but anyhow, that's what I got right now. But it's to help people. But it's not, I'm not going to, the things the Lord showed me are pretty intense, but it's like, I'm not going to build another soup kitchen, guys. Um, there's several of them that I've been to, not soup kitchens, but they give people, and it's like, man, you give, you know, they, you know, it's, I've had 1,200, I've, two of them, different ones, I've had 1,200, I've had 1,200. It's great, honorable, noble, maybe even, but went there to check them out because to do my due diligence to kind of see what's going on. 
the spy just to because I'm just like I'm trying to you know okay Lord I'm you know observing what do you want you know like it's just me people come in and they go out and tomorrow they're back and they're hungry again or needing more or whatever you know it's like no no ministering to them no Bibles are being passed out no words being preached no nothing no nothing no just so it's like so you know that goes along with what I'm saying guys I'm gonna cut this one short I'm gonna keep this under 10 minutes um <clears throat> goes along with what I'm saying about the ties I mean read it guys that's what God wants us to do is really 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 get into the details of his word in the details of the Holy Ghost and the details of what he's telling us that's why we want that's why the listening piece in the prayer piece is probably honestly more important than the, than the speaking piece and us talking it is just bringing our laundry list of things we need to God he already knows that what we need it's just time to listen guys but so when you're listening and he's telling you these things and let's take let's just a little bit of a breakdown on the ties okay read it bring on to everybody's the ties and offering into my storehouse so there might be food why would it be food guys why would it be something perishable why what is he talking he's talking about the food of the word guys he's talking about the spiritual things not not that you could bring in some, because most of it unfortunately in america is all revolved around the money he told me he's going to do things that aren't going to require money. He's going to pull a Gideon moment in his last days. There is going to be an outpouring. And I've heard this for a long time, you know, that, you know, time is, you know, we're in the end times. And, we're near, and I believe that. I really do. But guess what, guys? Pick a hospital. Go down there right now. End time for somebody drawing their last breath in a nursing home so you know all that can kind of go along with uh, and along with this giving and the offering and the tithes and all that stuff it all can become idols so can the prophecy and all this other stuff so what I'm trying to say guys is the grace is a time and space in God's gift to you, to mankind. But it's not to go and sin. Well, I think it's John 8, 11, but you know, go and sin no more. After you repent, after you clean yourself up, he wants a holy people, his bride, Matthew 22. Really read it, guys, read it with some depth. Nobody wants to, I read it for, you know, been saved for 40 years. <clears throat> Never really read it though till about a year ago. Read it, but I glossed over a lot of it. Read it with some depth, guys. I mean, he wants to preach some of the stuff that's that it says. I'll leave it up to you guys to discern it. Just read it about the marriage supper of the Lamb. What happened to the people that took it lightly? Why did they take it lightly? So, same thing with the, with the, you know, the grace. It's not just a blanket checked and just sin and then, oh, you know. I mean, it goes along with what I was talking about, about the offering, too, about the Cain and Abel offering, how one was acceptable and one wasn't. Um, so, he wants us, guys. That's his grace, not our stuff. It's just a tool, guys. Okay, and we got to get that. We got to get that back into our into our mindset. I'm not going to take a cordless drill and go plant a tree and, and dig the hole. It ain't going to work. I'm not going to take the shovel and try to hang a picture. That ain't going to work either. So, but but we got to get out of this mindset. That's why I'm honestly, I know this might hit a few people, and I'm okay. But it 
may not be a blessing. Money may not be a blessing. It might be a curse, guys. It's destroying a lot of people. Because their focus gets off on it. it. And we all can do it, okay? I, there was a preacher that was telling them about some big checks that were coming in and people were giving some really big donations and that was awesome and cool and great and they can do more things with it and blah, 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 da, da, da. Which, yes, I get it. I understand that. <clears throat> but they weren't doing anything with it. And then the Lord spoke to me and he said, I was kind of a little bit, you know, offended, sort of. You know, not really offended, but just hurt. Because I saw what they were doing with it. Which was nothing, really. They were just stacking it up. And the Lord said, wouldn't you think you were somebody special if somebody gave you those kind of checks? Yes, God. So I had to repent, pray for him but move on but i get it okay i got the we have a really good friend that's an overseas preacher in india and if he came to me and said hey guys i'm gonna you know when he comes over here sometimes to dallas he said if he came over up to us and say hey guys i'm gonna walk home and i'd follow him because he lives three thousand miles or five thousand or whatever across an ocean it's like man how's a dude gonna eat sleep what are you going to go to the bathroom? You know, I mean, what's he going to do? No, he had to have a plane fare, a hotel, rent a car. Of course, I get it. The tools, it's necessary. I'm not down in it. And having money doesn't make you evil either, guys. That's not what I'm saying either, so I'll go down that rabbit hole. It's the love of money, though. But what are you doing with it? But it's time to do something with the spirit, the grace that he's given us, unmerited. We have to give it out to others. So I don't know what that looks like. It may be, you know, it may be letting somebody live in your home that you really don't want to. You know, you may have a spare bedroom and there might be somebody that just kind of needs to get, get their life back. It may be, you know, I was at a local restaurant, small, or, well, it's a chain, I'm not name the chain because it's not, but gave a lady some stuff, some ministry stuff, asked her to email me. Um, she never did, but then I saw her a week later and she came up to me and she said that her kids, she's got three kids and they were kicked out of a church and they needed a place to go for the church and she's a single mom and they don't have a car and she's working at one of these chain restaurants you know can you imagine the wages that she's making probably not a lot guys so i'm going to talk to my wife tonight actually about it and we're going to do some things to try to help her but uh, but it, i'm going to try to channel it through a, a lady not a, not me but but so you don't ever know what God's telling you to do with the grace that he's given you. So what are you giving? You know, and that was part of the offering, the Cain and Abel offering. You know, some people are just trying to buy their way into heaven, honestly, or buy their way into the grace of God, or buy their way into Jesus, or buy their way into, you know, you can't make a check big enough, guys. Sorry. You want your heart, not your junk and stuff. It's just a tool, you know. Yes, we need buildings. Yes, we need to be eating the poor. Yes, we need to be out preaching the gospel, you know. But we don't have to build some big stadium, podium, platform. It may be the local place where you eat, the donut shop or whatever, and ministering to that person on the street. And... The way God gets the glory. And your gra his grace is sufficient and you're passing out and you're giving out. Instead of trying to write that big check in front of everybody and, you know, be like, the, you know, it's almost like the Ed McMahon thing, you know, where people stand in front of a camera with this big check. Not much difference, guys, in a lot of this in the church world. 
you know, it's God, God's not a big ATM, God. That's, that's how a lot of it. Why do you think it's so successful? Because a lot of them are like, man, I got a $65 million jet. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at all the money. And God can do the same thing for you. He'd be a seed offering, give a thousand dollars, and you're gonna get back ten thousand. God's not an ATM, guys. Not your personal ATM. Back to what I was saying about he gave his grace, his son, the redemption of mankind. He gave all that he had, the best that he had in heaven. It's time to just give. But it doesn't always have to be money. Time, effort. You know, my grandkids just love to spend time with us playing a game or whatever. My wife played a game with them last night. And they just, one of them just giggled and laughed and, and you thought she just got a billion dollars, you know? To her, it was special. So it was just time. So, you know, Maybe go, you know, cook a meal for somebody or go visit somebody in a nursing home or go to the hospital and visit somebody or the jailhouse. Jailhouses are full. There's a lot of prison ministries that could use some help. Get them clothes. Set them up in an apartment when they get out. You know? So, anyhow, um, that's it, guys. Love you guys. Uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Um, sorry for the picture of my car, but... Just kind of sitting here waiting and taking care of something. So, anyhow, we love you guys. Talk to you soon. Um, you want to email me? You can email me at jesusisalive at gmail.com. Jesusisaliveinamerica.com. You can blog with us. YouTube. Leave comments. Please start commenting. Um, let's connect. Uh, it's kind of what are you giving? So, anyhow, I'm going to clean it up a little bit, but right now I just wanted to get this one out there. I was praying about it. I'm like, okay, Lord, so what do I. All right. So, sorry for the rawness, but, you know, maybe it's necessary. Somebody needs to process it themselves. So, love you guys. Talk to you soon.